Hello, in this short video I would like to give a brief introduction and demo of this laboratory which is used for radiated electromagnetic compatibility test. If you have never heard of electromagnetic compatibility, one EMC problem or one incompatibility that almost everyone knows is you have your cell phone and you sit in front of a computer with speakers or a radio receiver and then you get a call or you receive a message or you call someone as I will do now, I don't have much money on my card, so I will call someone who will definitely not pick up the phone. I will call my office, and as soon as I call, you hear this very characteristic noise and disturbance in the speaker, and as soon as I quit the call, uh, the disturbance is gone. So what happens there is if you get a call or if you receive a message or if you call someone, your cell phone will radiate some electromagnetic wave, and the cable that is connected to the speaker, as every cable, acts as an antenna. It will pick up the signal, and then the speaker is an active speaker, so there's an amplifier in there, and this amplifier has nonlinear elements like diodes and transistors, and they will demodulate the signal. So you will not hear the 800, 900 megahertz of the cell phone. You will hear the pulse shape how this cell phone switches the signal on and off. This is the, the, the noise that you hear. And so the same thing we can try to reproduce in this laboratory. We can measure the emission of devices like the cell phone and we can test the immunity of other devices like the speaker or maybe some control device from a car or maybe some medical equipment. And for this, of course, we need to shield ourselves from the environment because if we want to measure emission of a certain device like the cell phone, we only want to measure the emission of the certain device and we don't want to measure all the radio stations and cell phones and Wi-Fi networks and whatnot from the surrounding. And for an immunity test, if we irradiate onto something, we want to potentially only disturb this device and we do not want to disturb half of the city around us. And therefore we need some shielding. So how can you shield yourself electromagnetically from the environment? How can you block electromagnetic waves with metal? And that's why this tent where I'm in is made out of metallized textile, the walls, the floor, the ceiling, also the door here. And this metal works like a mirror for the electromagnetic waves. So all the waves coming from the outside, they will be mirrored back, which is nice. But, and, all the waves that we create on the inside, they will be also mirrored back by the walls. So if this antenna here creates a wave, wave will travel through the chamber and will be reflected and will be re-reflected and re-reflected. So we get a superposition of traveling waves and there can be positive and negative interference and we get standing waves. So we get points where the field strengths is very small. These are the anti nodes, uh, the nodes of the wave. This is where deconstructive interference happens, and with positive interference, we get the anti nodes of the wave. So, points where field strength is high and points uh, where field strength is small. And the very same you have in your microwave oven at home. There's some magnetron creates um, an RF, a radio frequency signal, and if you put put food in there, then there are some places where the food gets hot very quickly and almost burns and there are other places where the food stays cold. And what your microwave oven manufacturer does, he introduces a turntable um, so that you move the food through this standing wave pattern so it gets evenly hot. And the same thing you could do in this, um, in this chamber here in this field, you could move your device in a test around in the field and search for a position where you have a high or a maximum field strength. But typically you do not want to move your device in a test around because maybe it's heavy or bulky or maybe there are cables attached to it. So there's this old saying, if the prophet cannot go to the mountain, the mountain needs to go to the prophet. So we want to leave our device on test in space and we want to move the field around. So how can we move the field around? With this device here. There's also uh, a big piece of metallized textile attached to this and waves are getting reflected at this too and if we move it or rotate it or change the position we change the reflection of the wave, we change the electromagn electromagnetic boundary conditions of this resonator 
and therefore we change this standing wave pattern and move it around through space. And this standing wave patterns in um, electromagnetic theory, they are called modes. And so this is a device that steers the modes. It's a mode steerer and the whole thing is called a mode steered chamber or a reverberation chamber because we get lots of echo reverb of this field from the walls. And so now we can come to a small demo. I have a signal generator here um, and I have a field probe that measures the field and here you can see the field probe measurements over time. And at the moment it's just noise. If I enable the signal generator, uh, frequency is one gigahertz and the power level is 20 dBm corresponding to 100 milliwatts. Then we get a nice and almost stable field here. And as soon as I move in there, of course I also reflect the waves and of course I also change the standing wave pattern in here. Um, as you can see on the measurement results, the, the, the field changes. And it changes even more drastically if I move this field probe here around. This is what the turntable in your microwave oven at home does, moving the device on a test through space. And this really rapidly changes the field. Uh, but this is not what you want to do because as you can see, there are cables, exam for example, attached to it. I cannot arbitrarily move it around. The same, what you could do is source steering. You could move the antenna around. Also, if I move the antenna around, you should see that the field values change all the time. But once again, there's a cable attached to the antenna. You cannot arbitrarily move it around. So this is where this mode steerer comes into play. And if I once again get out here and uh, wait a second, then you see, okay, these values more or less get stable again. And now if I move this mode steerer around and rotate it, then you see how the movement of the steerer also changes the field values very effectively even at this uh, quite small frequency for this chamber with a rather long wavelength. And what also works very effectively to change the field pattern in this chamber is just to shake the walls. So if I move the outer wall here, then you can see in the measurement results how they now really, really drastically change. Um, but this is not very reproducible, of course but rather random. And what also works for immunity tests is so-called frequency steering. Um, so using a frequency sweep at the signal generator, taking into account that EUT's devices on a test usually have a rather broad bandwidth. If you can disturb them at one gigahertz, you will be also able to disturb them at 1.001 gigahertz. But the field in this chamber drastically changes um, by changing the frequency by one megahertz because of the high quality factor and the low bandwidth of this chamber. So if I enable, uh, once again, we have more or less steady values here now. If I enable a frequency sweep, now frequency changes by one megahertz every 10 milliseconds. You see how the field rapidly changes inside this uh, reverberation chamber. This would be called frequency steering. Okay, so I will disable the frequency sweep once again and we get more or less stable values and we have now a field strength of around two and a half volts per meter. One last thing that I could show is, now of course at the moment, lots of energy that is radiated by the antenna gets lost through this open door. If I try to close the door, at least a little bit. Um, so then I increase the quality factor of the chamber, uh, lowering the losses inside because there are now more reflections. And the field strength now goes up to three, uh, four, sometimes even five volts per meter, depending on what the actual position is. So, and this is definitely one big advantage of such mode steroid or reverberation chambers due to the high quality fact factor of the field and the high Q of the, of the resonator, 
um, you get rather high field strength with small input powers only. So with this 100 milliwatt here input power, we get a couple of volts per meter. And this is definitely some advantage. And the other advantage is that in a statistical sense, we get a homogeneous and isotropic field. So it does not matter where you place some device on a test in here, and it does not matter in which direction you orient it, and especially in which direction cables are oriented. In a statistical meaning, on average, you get the same result. And this is also tr uh, true for emission tests. So if you have some device and let it radiate in here, it does not matter in which direction it will radiate. The field, the emitted field, will always be reflected one from the walls and uh, reflected and reflected and it will be always received by the receiving antenna. So it's a very, very robust way, um, independent of the actual radiation pattern of your device on a test to measure the total radiated power during some emission test. And the disadvantage, of course, is that in such a reverb chamber, you get no information about direction. You don't know in which direction you have the highest emission of your device on a test and you don't know from which direction your device is most susceptible in some immunity test. 